Could the past, present, and future all exist right now? Is it possible that at this moment you are watching this video, being born, and taking your very last breath all at once? It sounds absurd. Our common sense tells us that only the present is real, the past is gone, and the future hasn't happened yet. Time is like a movie reel, with each frame replacing the last, each moment giving way to the next. Right now is all that exists, fleetingly, before it slips into the past. But what if our understanding of time is wrong? What if time doesn't flow at all? In this video, we'll explore the paradox of time as revealed by Einstein's theory of relativity and modern physics. Prepare for a journey through relative time, block universes, quantum uncertainty, and some truly mind-boggling possibilities about the nature of reality. As I mentioned just a minute ago, imagine time as the frames of a film reel or pages in a flipbook. Each frame is like a snapshot of the entire universe at one instant. Planets in orbit, people living their lives, you watching this video. In the ordinary view, only the current frame exists, the one labeled now. The past frames are already played out and gone, and the future frames haven't been drawn yet. This view is called presentism. Only the present moment is real. It's how time feels for us day to day. However, in the early 20th century, Albert Einstein shattered this simple picture. His theory of relativity suggests that time and space are part of a single combined fabric called space-time, and that there is no single universal now. He asserts that what events happen at the same time depends on your frame of reference. Two observers moving relative to each other will disagree on what events are happening now. As Einstein put it, the distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. This isn't just abstract theory, it has strange, real consequences. Suppose there's an alien civilization a million light years away. One alien is floating stationary relative to Earth. In that case, you and the alien share the same now. If you could FaceTime him, you could chat in real time. But another alien is zooming away from Earth at a high speed. Let's say 30 kilometers per second. Due to relativity, this alien slice of now is tilted with respect to ours. In their reality, Earth's now might correspond to our past. Perhaps the year 1920, when your great-grandparents were young. With a magic instant video camera, this alien could literally watch the events of our past unfolding right now. Meanwhile, a third ET hurtling towards Earth at the same speed has a now that cuts the other way, encompassing our future. From their perspective, they could witness events that haven't happened for us yet. So which aliens now is the true present? According to Einstein, all of them are equally valid. Relativity insists on cosmic democracy. The viewpoint of every observer is just as legitimate as any other, with no master clock or absolute frame of time. This means that what you call the present is only your present. Someone moving differently or located far away will have a different set of simultaneous events in their present, a different now, and there's nothing privileged about yours or theirs. If that's true, it suggests something mind-blowing. Everything that has ever happened, and will ever happened, already exists in space-time. Past, present, and future might all be out there on the cosmic timeline, the same way that all places in space exist even if you aren't visiting them at the moment. This idea is known as the block universe, or eternalism. We can visualize it like a colossal four-dimensional block encompassing all of history. If we stack all those film frames from the universe's moments, we'd get a gigantic block of space and time. In this block universe model, every event, the extinction of the dinosaurs, the release of the first iPhone, the day you graduated, all exist equally somewhere in the block. There's no special moving present that travels through the frames. Instead, time doesn't flow at all. All moments just are, spread out in the continuum of space-time. The present is simply a subjective feeling, much like here is when you happen to be in space. Just as different people inhabit different places in space, like here versus there, different observers inhabit different slices of time, now versus then. But in the block view, all those places and times are equally real. This concept is kind of counterintuitive. We can feel time passing. We remember the past and we worry about the future. But physics equations don't actually have a built-in flow of time. They're just as happy describing time as a static dimension. In a block universe, asking which moment is now is like asking which point in space is here. The answer depends on your perspective, and none are special. If the block universe is true, it raises an unsettling question. Is the future already written? If all moments in time already exist in the block, that means the future is just as real as the past. Every action you will ever take, 
including the moment you decide whether to like this video or not, would already be out there in space-time. This deterministic view was indeed Einstein's perspective. Once, he consoled a friend whose loved one died, and he wrote, For those of us that understand physics, the separation between past, present, and future is an illusion. In other words, nothing truly comes to an end or waits to happen. It's all out there. So if the future already exists and the flow of time is an illusion, then it would make sense that we have no free will, right? After all, how can you change the future if every moment is already fixed in the block? Feels like our choices won't matter. The universe would be like a DVD playing out a pre-recorded story and you're just along for the ride. You might feel like you can choose to pause this video and come back later, but in a block universe, that outcome, whether you do or don't, is already encoded into space-time. This is a classic determinism problem. If the laws of physics plus the state of the universe determine everything completely, then the future is already locked in. Some physicists and philosophers do interpret relativity this way, that the cosmos has precisely one history, set in stone from start to finish. In this view, every event was predetermined at the Big Bang. But hold on, before we surrender to fate, quantum physics throws a wrench into the works. Unlike classical physics, Quantum mechanics introduces an element of genuine randomness into the universe. Certain processes are fundamentally unpredictable. Most famous example being radioactive decay. If you have a single unstable atom, there is no mechanism in the universe as far as we know that can tell you exactly when it will decay and emit radiation. It might happen in the next second or it could happen in a million years. All physics can offer is a probability for each time window. As one physics forum user neatly put it, Quantum mechanics can calculate the probability of decay, but it cannot tell when a given atom will decay. It's not due to our ignorance or lack of technology. It appears to just be a fundamental feature of reality. In quantum theory, there's no hidden script for certain events, just a roll of the dice. Random quantum events could, in principle, affect big things. Imagine a single radioactive decay in some distant past caused a genetic mutation in one of Earth's early mammals. That mutation could lead to a new species, like an ancestor of humans, altering the course of evolution. If that one atom decayed a little later instead, that mutation might never have happened, and maybe you wouldn't be here. On larger scales, quantum randomness underlies all sorts of outcomes. For instance, whether a given star happens to explode as a supernova this year or a thousand years from now. So if quantum physics is correct, the future isn't completely predetermined. There are genuine uncertainties, multiple possible ways events could turn out. The block of space-time might not be a rigid crystal of destiny, but instead something more flexible or undefined in certain areas. This leads to a bit of a paradox. How do these unpredictable events become real concrete history? Before they happen, we can't say for sure what will happen, only probabilities. But when they do happen, they become part of the fixed past. When exactly does that solidify? We feel like there is a moving present moment, a thin line between an uncertain future and an immutable past. Yet earlier we saw that relativity forbids a single universal present that everyone agrees on. So what gives? Is there a now or not? One way to reconcile these ideas is with what philosophers call the growing block universe. This theory says that yes, the past and present exist, but the future does not, at least not yet. In other words, the block of space-time is growing as time passes. New events come into being at the edge of time, which is what we would call the present. You can imagine the history of the universe as a massive book being written page by page, with everything up to the current page already written, but the next pages are blank. With each moment, as events occur and quantum uncertainties resolve, another page gets written and added to the book. The block extends forward. In this view, time does have a kind of flow. The present is like the moving spotlight or the cutting edge that keeps pushing into the unknown future, turning possibilities into realities. If the growing block theory is true, then you really can influence the future, since it isn't yet set. Your choices and random chance events help write the next chapter of the universe. This idea still respects Einstein's cosmic democracy to an extent. Different observers might not agree on a global now, but we can think of the present as a bumpy surface composed of all the individual nows of every observer at that moment. Each observer, each particle, has its own well-defined now. Those personal nows together form the leading edge of reality. And as time progresses, that edge advances, adding new slices of space-time. The block universe still exists, but it isn't an eternal block stretching to the end of time. It's a growing block that builds itself as events unfold. This concept restores some sense of the flow of time, and it passes the free will butter test. 
it would mean the future isn't already out there waiting inexorably. The universe happens as we go. It's a tempting compromise between the weirdness of relativity and our intuitive experience that time flows forward and our decisions matter. So then, what is the true nature of time? Let's recap some of the possibilities. The first being presentism, or kind of our common sense time. Only the present moment is real. The universe is like a film playing frame by frame. It matches our intuition, but it clashes with relativity's insistence that different observers have different sets of simultaneous events. Next, we have eternalism, or the block universe, in which past, present, and future all exist in a static 4D block. There's no flow of time, and now is just a subjective notion like here. It fits well with relativity, as there's no universal now, and Einstein's view that time's passage is an illusion, but it challenges our sense of free will and becoming. And lastly, we have growing block universe. The past and present exist, while the future is open and not yet real. The block of space-time grows as new events occur. This preserves a universal sense that something is happening, and time evolves, without a predetermined future. Though it's a bit of a philosophical workaround and it's not a standard physics theory. So then, which of these is actually real? We have to admit, no one knows for sure. Despite all our equations and experiments, the paradox of time remains. Is now a special, objectively moving spotlight? Or is it just my subjective slice of space-time? Are the dinosaurs and distant future civilizations still out there in time and just not accessible to us? We don't have a definitive answer. Even physicists and philosophers are divided. Some argue that the idea of a flowing time or a universal present just doesn't make sense on a cosmic scale. Time might be purely relational and local, tied to each observer. Others suspect that time itself might not exist fundamentally at all. It's just an emergent concept or even a trick of human perception. In cutting-edge quantum gravity research, for example, some equations suggest time might emerge from more basic, timeless laws, the way temperature emerges from particle motion, or how life emerges from lifeless molecules. Possible that what we experience as the passage of time is a byproduct of something deeper and more complex that we don't yet understand. Time is perhaps the most profound of mystery in our universe. We live it every day, yet the more scientists examine it, the more elusive and strange it becomes. Is the future already written, or do we write it as we go? Is time an illusion, or the most fundamental truth of reality? As of now, whenever that may be, we simply don't have the final answers. The paradox of time continues to fascinate and confound us, urging us to keep exploring. One thing is certain, understanding time better will also help us understand ourselves, because our entire lives are threads woven into this grand tapestry of space-time. And who knows, with each new discovery, each page added to the block of reality, we might come a tiny bit closer to unraveling the true nature of time, if time itself will allow it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more videos just like this one every week. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next time.